I'm Erin Matherin, and I lead the Global Accounts Organization for LinkedIn Sales Solutions. I have the pleasure of leading a team of sales leaders and sellers to partner with our largest strategic customers, which Salesforce is one of them. And I'm excited to have Victor here with me today to share with you about one of the really exciting feature launches that we recently had. Victor, let you introduce yourself. Hey everyone, I'm Victor Liu. I'm leading Salesforce seller, uh, seller Experiences, where we are re-envisioning how sellers interact with CRM, do their jobs, build their relationships, and connect with customers so that they could advance their pipeline. Excellent. So it could not be a LinkedIn webinar if I did not ask you this opening question, which is what's not on your LinkedIn profile? So I'll go first to give you a little time, um, and it's going to be super lightweight. So for me, what's not on my LinkedIn profile that I'm really excited about is that I recently became a life member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, which is the first Black Greek letter organization. And I share that distinction with my mother and my grandmother. So really proud to have done that recently. Victor, what about you? That's fantastic. I'm um, in a fraternity myself, but it is on my LinkedIn profile, so I'll give you another point. I'm a proud father. I have a young two-year-old daughter, uh, daughter, and she's keeping me quite busy outside of work. Excellent. Excellent. Well, now we're going to transition to talk a bit about work um, and talk about some of the new features that we just launched. So I thought we could answer some questions about this exciting feature, and then later we're going to have a demo um, by one of our amazing solutions consultants. So first question that I have for you is we kind of think about the sales tools landscape. We know that a lot of providers are, have tools out there. There's just a ton, right? It's a tool sprawl. So what do you think are the advantages to an organization of connecting their sales tools? For many of our customers, Serum is that single source of truth. It's that system of record that you're able to track every single touch point between your brand and your customer. But for a growing number of our customers, though, Serum is also evolving to become their system of intelligence and action. It's also the place where you want to be able to send out your LinkedIn messages and where you can go ahead and mine for details around conversations. So sellers don't always live inside of Serum all day. They also work inside of their email and LinkedIn on the web and they're researching. But we just got to ensure that they are able to connect all those tools back into Serum so that, so that they could have that holistic view of their customer. And then they could use that understanding to inform the next best action to take. And that will help unlock the seller's pipeline production. No, that makes a, a ton of sense. So I in sales, so I do a lot of visual imagery when I think about um, different tools and features. And so when I think about the advantages to a customer of connecting their tools, it, it's kind of similar to your car, right? So now in a car, we've got GPS, we've got all the things integrated, um, where before people had the printout of their map and they maybe had their compass and it was really clunky and inefficient to get to the destination. So when you integrate your sales tools, it really is simple. It's like the GPS in your car. It gives you the efficient way to get to your destination. So really exciting. It also gives you all the insights and data that are critical for sellers nowadays. So let's think about the flip side though. Uh, for organizations that do not connect their sales tools, what's the risk to them? Well, the way I see it, um, you have data, intelligence, and actions really make up the three-legged stool that truly unlocks that flywheel effect, that virtuous cycle within your organization. And fragmenting any of them would result in missing context. You're now swiveling chairing across multiple applications. You're losing productivity, but ultimately you're impacting your customer experience. Yeah, I would agree. I hear the swivel chair. I also hear customers talking about wanting to have a single pane of glass. And when you think about it, there's lots of studies out there, but typically we find that sellers spend 30% of their time actually in front of customers selling. So that time that they're not selling is critical for organizations to impact to ensure that they're most productive and successful. And specifically, the activities that we know that they're taking on, like researching, et cetera. So if they're having to go to different sites and tools, jumping out in and out of the CRM, it definitely is a hit on productivity. So now let's talk maybe a bit more about specifically Sales Navigator and Salesforce.com. So when you think about the connection between the two, how does connecting Salesforce.com and Sales Navigator via CRM Sync make both of those features better or those systems better? So many of our users live and breathe by LinkedIn in order to understand key customer insights. And anytime we can unlock data and experiences that are trapped on islands, so that the entire organization has full visibility into what's going on, um, that's going to help a lot and to be able to enable people to be able to make informed decisions, which is a total win in my book. 
So for me, CRM Sync ultimately saves sellers time. It removes a lot of the additional steps for sellers to manually get, in, get their data in. It ensures consistency. It also gives management, again, that full visibility of all activities through the day-to-day, -day, through the operation report. Yeah, I think um, not to mention that it's a huge win for IT teams. Like when I'm having conversations with CIOs and other members of um, the information technology community, they're really looking for a win for the field. How can they directly contribute to revenue? And so when you think about integrating Sales Navigator, which is a tool that is loved by sellers and is, is a place where they're going to be finding information and leveraging it to do their jobs better, bringing that into CRM really is a win. It allows them to be in the surfaces that they already are in or that they're organizations want them to be in, getting all the resources that they might have to hop in and out, creating that swivel chair. So for sure. So now when we think about uh, Sales Navigator and Salesforce.com, as I mentioned, we have these really exciting features that we just launched, um, the embedded experiences. So when you think about the embedded experiences, how does that augment the connection between Salesforce.com and Sales Navigator? Uh, with an embedded experience, we're truly able to define a delightful experience for our sellers so that they have everything that they need in one single place before initiating that outreach. So especially with so many CRM customers also customizing and they're pulling in their custom analytics dashboards, their usage and app data, third-party engagement data and intent information, it's so critical to have LinkedIn components front and center to be able to tie everything all together. Yeah, I would agree. And you know what we're seeing across the, the industry are a lot of different... Um, pointers that show that these embedded experiences really are the critical features that sellers need. So I lead a sales organization, as I mentioned to you, I've been in sales for a number of years. And, you know, one of the things that we at LinkedIn Sales Solutions have said and touted is that the metric that people really need to focus on is high quality conversations with the people that matter. And how you do that is you find the right people. So find key people is one of the features that we launched based on your search criteria, allowing sellers to figure out who those people are that they want to target. The next is making sure that you have the right information. So you're doing your research before those conversations as a high performer habit. And that's account IQ, providing that financial data, the challenges and objectives of the organization. And then finally, once you identify the people, you have an informed conversation to be able to dialogue with them. It's then mapping out the buying committee, which we typically find that there are about 11 people that are in the B2B selling cycle. So you want to identify and recognize your risk when you're not multi-threaded. And so having that relationship map so that can visualize as a seller or as a sales manager really is critical uh, for impacting your sales process and having that right in the CRM is an added bonus. So Victor, this has been a great conversation talking through these features and the benefit of being better together with Salesforce.com and Sales Navigator. But now I'd love to turn it over to Taylor Lewis, who's one of our expert solutions consultants to show us exactly what these um, new features can do for sellers. Nice to meet everyone. My name is Taylor Lewis. I am a principal solutions consultant here at LinkedIn. My bread and butter is the integration between LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Salesforce. And on a daily basis, I empower my customers to integrate the two solutions to create a more streamlined, powerful selling experience. Today, we'll talk about embedded experiences and how those experiences bring the LinkedIn Sales Navigator tools to the forefront of an end user Salesforce experience. We see this first through Account IQ, where we're able to pull in a comprehensive overview of my account directly within Salesforce by showing powerful account insights such as priorities and business challenges. And rather than scouring the web for important account detail, I have it served up to me quickly with information such as industry, number of employees, headquartered location, as well as revenue. And with the summary of key information presented to me, the time that I would normally spend researching, I can now focus on how do I improve my buyer conversations? Account IQ is setting me up to have more informed, personalized conversations because now I can easily understand what are the priorities across this target account, what are some pain points, and then what's top of mind for company leaders. Now that I know what's top of mind for this account, I can focus on identifying who I need to build relationships with by pinpointing leads that more closely match my target buyer's persona. And with personification, I can fine tune my prospecting efforts to ensure that I'm targeting the people who can make decisions across buying conversations. 
And because I can prospect directly within Salesforce, I'm actually reducing my swivel between the two systems. So I have more time to focus on building relationships with hidden allies across my, my target account. And once I have that fine tuned list of prospects to engage with, I can actually leverage some connection pathways that get surfaced to me, such as commonalities between my prospect and myself, such as did we attend the same university or did we work at the same company, but then also things like warm introductions from people who work at my company. Once I've identified that key individual that I want to start to engage with, I can add them to an existing lead list, which will ensure that I will get updates and alerts on this prospect moving forward. And now that I know who I can target, I can actually work within one centralized place to visualize and identify the buying committee with my teammates. Within Relationship Map, I can add contacts to this map with my account team in one consolidated place. This actually allows us to identify any gaps and update any out of date information accordingly. But it also allows us to collectively strategize on how do we build relationships and influence the people that will move the needle the most throughout a deal. All in all, the Salesforce embedded experiences enable my selling efforts by providing me with accurate data and insights across my accounts so that I can action quickly by providing pathways to develop key buyer relationships, and then promoting collaboration across my broader account team so that we can strategize our efforts for effective outreach, all without having to leave Salesforce. Thank you very much. And back to you, Erin. Thank you so much, Taylor. It's great to see all of the features in action so you really understand the value and impact that it's bringing into the CRM tool. So thank you so much, Taylor. So now, um, as we think about embedded experiences, you know, the, the three that we've touched on, I just want to make sure to highlight a few and then also share with you, um, not just our LinkedIn sales solutions and um, salesforce.com perspective, but also that we have customers that have been testing it out in the field as part of our beta class. And those individuals are already providing feedback about the value that their sales teams are receiving. So the three features that we launched are, again, Find key people, which is going to allow you to really hone in on how to have those high quality conversations with the people that matter. You'll be able to understand who are past customers and where you have warm introductions, which really is critical to differentiate yourself from having cold calls versus those that are fed by warm connections and relationships that you have in the past. The other piece is Account IQ, which is personally my favorite feature that's been launched. And where I see Account IQ really being impactful is all that time that sellers are leveraging to prep for meetings, conversations, and account planning is now centralized within the CRM, which makes it seamless for them and really removes that swivel chair. It also allows them to show up as trusted advisors when they come into their conversations versus uninformed sellers, which is definitely not what we know prospects and customers are looking for. And then the last is relationship map. And so as you think about that as a sales leader or as a seller, you want to identify your risk. Where are you single threaded, where you have one relationship that really can make or break the deal and you need to expand the buying committee and the relationship map really will help you to visualize that. So when we think about other customers that are in our beta, what we've heard from customers like PJ Pollan from Contentful is that his organization actually leveraged another tool for their relationship mapping activity. And they were actually able to deprecate that tool because they found so much value in leveraging relationship map within Sales Navigator powered in the salesforce.com solution. So definitely hitting on identifying the buying committee, making sure that you had a solution to do relationship mapping, and then leveraging all of the functionality and insights, um, having it plugged into the CRM. So now um, we'd like to go to a few questions that we've got from the audience. So we've got our first question that's coming in. So the question is, how can my team start using these features? The good news is if you're on Advanced Plus, all you need to do is to make sure that you have the right permissions enabled, go to the App Exchange, and you're all set. If you have CRM sync, it's really going to enhance your experience. If you're on the advanced platform, then you'll need to reach out to your LinkedIn sales solutions sales rep because that individual will need to provide you pricing to upgrade to advanced plus. So we've got another um, question coming through. So this question is, 
Do you have suggestions on where to place embedded experiences on a salesforce.com page? So I'll take a bit of this and then I'm going to turn it over to Victor, who's much more of the expert. So with this, um, as you think about uh, where to place it specifically, if you have, again, Advanced Plus and you've got CRM Sync turned on, it's very straightforward. But one of the questions that we do get is when an organization has not gone all in, meaning that all of their sellers have Sales Navigator licenses, Sometimes there's a question of, is there going to be just this empty box? Like, what are we going to do within our CRM? And so I'm going to turn it over to Victor to talk a bit about how one might get around that, because we definitely have a solution to make sure that it's seamless. So Victor, can you share a bit about how you might address that question? Yeah, first and foremost, I would love to put that LinkedIn component or those set of LinkedIn components front and center. We should put it right on your account and opportunity pages. Also, just make sure those components are sitting above the fold. Um, preferably also on a wide format so that you don't have too many columns, too much uh, context that is overwhelming your users, but also ensuring that those insights are seen by sellers every single time they navigate to the pages. Salesforce as a platform is very flexible. So you do have the ability to adjust the visibility of that component. You has you also have the ability to go ahead and choose if that component should show up on specific applications that could also be geared towards different user sets. Thank you so much. So that's all the questions that we have for today. I really appreciate everyone's time in joining us for this exciting launch. Thank you so much, Victor. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, everyone. Looking forward to everyone taking advantage of embedded experiences.